Hello, this is Professor Barker, and this lecture is on connective tissue disorders for those of you who either missed class or just need a refresher. The objectives for this lesson are listed here. We're going to define what connective tissues are, and in fact, I'm going to do that right now because there's a question. I don't remember if it was on your test or in your workbook or somewhere that asks you what do connective tissues include something to that effect and for the purpose of this lecture and this lesson we're talking about bone cartilage ligaments and tendons and those can be found um, on page 940 has them highlighted there and I'll talk about each one of those if you go back a page on page 939 it talks about all other kinds of connective tissues and different types and um, talks about blood vessels the GI tract all of that and not that those aren't important but for this lesson we're talking about the bones cartilage ligaments and tendons we're going to identify data to be collected in the nursing assessment of a patient with a connective tissue disorder talk about pathophysiology of a lot of disorders of connective tissue and they're listed here rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis osteoporosis gout scleroderma polymyositis bursitis carpal tunnel syndrome ankylosing spondylitis I love saying that Reiter syndrome Bequet syndrome and Sjogren syndrome and I may not be pronouncing that those correctly but um, best I can do and we're going to talk about characteristics and prevalence of various diseases Here are some of the categories of connective tissue. You can see we have loose, dense, elastic, hematopoietic, and strong. And of course, again, the four that we're talking about, bones, cartilage, ligament, and tendons, you can see fall in the category of either strong, as in the cartilage, bone, ligaments, or the dense. And this makes sense because the primary purpose of these types of connective tissue is to provide protection to body parts. I'm not going to define bone or cartilage because I think pretty much everyone knows what those are. However, ligaments and tendons, not everyone knows. Ligaments connect bones to other bones or bones to cartilage. Some of them are more stretchy than others. And you can follow along. It says the yellow ligaments, like those in the vertebral column, and we're talking about like in your back, are elastic and allow for stretching, but the ligaments of the knee are not supposed to stretch but instead provide stability. Sometimes those ligaments unfortunately do stretch and then we have someone happen to have one of those knee surgeries that are pretty common. And then tendons, instead of connecting bone to other bone, tendons are going to anchor muscles to the bones. A lot of times disorders of connective tissue are called joint disorders because joint mobility depends on the function of the connective tissue. A joint is just a site at which two or more bones of the body meet. Usually when we say the word joint we're thinking of like an elbow or a knee or a shoulder and certainly those are joints. Those are a particular type of joint though. Um, they're usually called synovial joints or your textbook calls them diarthroses and that's because they move. They're encased in a capsule and they have some um, synovial fluid, it's called. Kind of think of that like oil for a car because it has moving parts. But not all joints can move. There's several bones in our, that make up our skull and they join, so it's called a joint, but they certainly don't move around. So joints don't have to move, but the ones that people have the most trouble with are generally the ones that do. So again, connective tissue disorders usually mean joint disorders. And here we have a picture of a joint here, and we have some articular cartilage and a joint capsule. So this is a, um, one of those movable joints here. Age-related changes happen in the bones and the joints. Specific to the bones, as we age, we lose mass, strength, and density in our bones. And when we talk about the problem of osteoporosis, this is directly related to um, loss of bone density or bone mass. 
So as we age, um, our bones get lighter, less dense, and so they break easier. Joints, as we age, the cartilage loses its elasticity, and it softens and frays. And so instead of being nice and smooth, it's kind of jaggedy and has rough edges. And therefore, it doesn't work as well to um, lubricate and cushion our joints. And so the friction between the bones increases. Anytime you have friction, you can develop these bone spurs. They're little growths of, outgrowths of bone where they shouldn't be. Kind of like if you have, um, let's say you have a wisdom tooth in the upper and you have the lower one pulled out well it's not going to have anything to grind against and so it's going to probably grow weird and start poking into your jaw like little sharp points because there's nothing to grind it off well bones are the same way as this wears out they can develop bone spurs and those can be quite painful so here we have this articular cartilage is what lines the top of the bones and you're just going to have to get really familiar with that term articular cartilage because we're going to be talking about osteoarthritis and it's all about the degeneration of this articular cartilage a review of medical terminology do you remember this word crepitus that's one of those words that I didn't know when I started nursing school, but crepitus is just that crackling sound or sensation. Sometimes you don't hear it, but you can just feel it that occurs during joint movement. Now would be a good time to pause and complete these parts of your study guide, kind of go along with what we are talking about. And then I'm going to skip a whole bunch of pages. I'm going to skip common therapeutic measures where it talks about drug, drug therapy, the diagnostic tests and procedures, and then that whole um, chart on page 944 and on to 946 where it talks about the drugs. We're going to talk about the drugs more in pharmacology. And as far as the lab tests, I think your um, workbook does a really good job of covering that. So I'm not going to cover that at this time. So at the very bottom of page 949, it starts on osteoarthritis. And like I just said, the definition of osteoarthritis is degeneration of articular cartilage. We can have primary and secondary osteoarthritis. The most common is the most common form of arthritis. We're also going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis, and that's completely different. And on your tests and in practice, you really need to be able to distinguish between the two because they're really quite different from one another. So primary would be associated with aging, and then secondary can occur as a result of trauma infection, congenital, uh, congenital just means some defect that someone's born with, corticosteroid therapy, and we'll talk more about that in pharmacology, diabetes mellitus, obesity. One way that I think of osteoarthritis rather than rheumatoid arthritis is it's when your joints wear out. And so if you were someone who played sports when you were younger, or even maybe now you still play sports. That's great and it's healthy and I don't want to discourage anyone from doing that. But that's where a lot of times we see the osteoarthritis sit in. So let's say you're a tennis player and you're not one of those that switch hands. You always play with your right hand. Then as you age, that right elbow and that right shoulder have a higher risk of developing osteoarthritis in them because of use, overuse, misuse, all of those combined, whereas your left arm may not develop arthritis at all. That's a big difference between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis is it's usually not equal on both sides, whereas rheumatoid arthritis, if it affects both elbows or if it affects one elbow, it's going to affect the other osteoarthritis can affect one side or the other depending on what the person has done for a living or done for recreation so a lot of our sports enthusiasts have osteoarthritis later on in life a runner um, maybe won't have arthritis or osteoarthritis in his arms or elbows or shoulders or any of that but he's going to have problems maybe with the knees or hips and so it has to do with what's been used a lot in the body as to development of osteoarthritis. 
Osteoarthritis generally affects joints that are under pressure. And I already mentioned a few um, spine, fingers, knees, hips, shoulders. And it is, or the most common source of major disability is osteoarthritis of the knee. And one reason why I like to start med search out with um, connective tissue disorders is most of the places that you're going to be doing starting clinicals, a lot of those are either rehabs or have um, a rehab patient section. And so you're going to be seeing a lot of these knee replacements, hip replacements, rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. So this was a great place for us to start MedSurge 1. On page 950 under pathophysiology, the very last sentence there has some words in italics, and that's an important sentence. I have it highlighted, so you should too. It says, although osteoarthritis is generally classified as a non-inflammatory condition, inflammation of the joint is common in advanced conditions because of tissue breakdown. Now, why would they put that in there? Well, they put that in there because that's a very important differentiation between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And it's kind of like the whole joke about what comes first, the chicken or the egg. What comes first, the inflammation or the injury. So in osteoarthritis, the injury comes first. You have degeneration of the articular cartilage. Again, get, get familiar with that phrase. And because there's degeneration and there's injury, then sometimes that person will experience inflammation. And that's why NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs help people with osteoarthritis when we get into pharmacology. And so the injury occurs and it causes inflammation. When we talk about rheumatoid arthritis later on, it's opposite. Rheumatoid arthritis is considered an inflammatory condition because the inflammation happens first and it leads to injury of the joints. Rheumatoid arthritis is considered an autoimmune. So for some reason, the body attacks itself and we don't know why. It's not because they have played tennis or, or had joints under pressure. It has nothing to do with that. It's just all of a sudden the body just attacks those joints and the attack is the same as inflammation. That's what inflammation is, is the body um, attacking what it considers to be some invader or injury. And so then the inflammation then leads to the injury. So it's reverse in osteo versus rheumatoid. Understanding that one is inflammatory and the other isn't makes the next um, section called medical diagnosis make more sense because the diagnosis is made by both health history and radiographic radiographic studies and as well as some labs and if you see at the top of page 951 it says a normal ESR negative RF assay and synovial fluid with fewer no leukocytes are expected and that's for the diagnosis of osteoarthritis and then it goes on to say low titers of ANA if you flip back to page 943 it has all of those tests listed in that chart and it, as you read them those are all detecting inflammation so the ESR the ANA the rheumatoid factor the RF those are detecting antibodies and inflammation and so if someone has really high levels of all of those then it suggests that we might be looking at rheumatoid arthritis rather than osteoarthritis because we can't just diagnose it by this um, history and patient report alone because the symptoms, the joint soreness and the pain is going to be so similar, but the treatment is going to be different depending on which one they have. Health history and osteoarthritis, we're going to usually find some accident or injury in the past that might have resulted. I already talked about that if someone played um, tennis or jogged or maybe had a bad car accident in the past that can contribute to the development of osteoarthritis. And I'm going to pause here and we'll get to treatment in the next video.